It shouldn't be there like you're doing a pirate cosplay. It should be up here and like relatively tight. Well, everybody loves a tier list and apparently also me talking about lady armor, so here we are. Our highest tier is basically, I'd wear it. It looks convincing, maybe it's historically accurate. It gives you confidence that this character knows what they're doing and I would not object to wearing it as a costume. Next up is pretty good, which is basically, it had a strong concept and there are plenty of elements to like, but there are just too many slightly iffy details to ignore. In the middle, we have a special category for not actually armor, which is for the stuff which I get asked to review a lot, but doesn't actually come under the category of protective clothing. But we need somewhere to put it, so that's where it's going. Moving right along, we have could be worse. An attempt was made, some of it isn't too bad, but overall it's just not working. And right at the bottom, we have just stab me now, because that is probably what would happen if you decided to wear this into an actual fight. Sorry, not sorry. For those of you who are new here, I'm Jill Bearup and I'm an actor combatant, which is why I have a particular interest in could you actually wear this stuff and move in it? We're gonna really need to go for it. If you're a Patreon, I might wanna hop over there now because that is a significantly longer video. I've got this handy iPad, which means I can draw things on the pictures. So where are we gonna start? Wonder Woman's Golden Eagle Armor from Wonder Woman 1984. On the one hand, so shiny. So visually imposing. A helmet! On the other hand, you can't see it in this picture, or indeed most pictures, but she is wearing wedge-heeled boots. Yeah, they do tend to hide her feet in shame, and so they should. So obviously this one cannot go in the top tier. Nothing with wedge-heeled boots goes in the top tier. Sorry, can't. The other thing which is a bit of an issue is this kind of swimsuit crotch piece. Like, that's not really how those are supposed to work. That is a difficult area to clothe in armor, but you could have given her like a little skirt bit or something. It just, it looks really uncomfortable and I wonder how she puts it on. We do have what looks like good waist segmentation here. I'm not necessarily wild about the boob plate, but you know, I'll, I'll cope with it. The other thing which looks strange is this material here, like the stuff that's on her arms and legs, which I'm just going to assume is Amazon stuff. Like it was handed down by the gods because what it looks like to me is quilted fabric. And so, you know what? It's kind of a fantasy movie. I'm gonna give that something of a pass. Overall, I like the concept, but there are enough weird details that I would have put it in could be worse, but they did give her a helmet, which she wears all the time, which I'm just gonna bump it up to pretty good just for that. Next up is Lady Sif in Thor The Dark World. Okay, you can see that we've got a sort of corset breastplate here, which exposes her upper chest. I mean, head, neck, chest, th this whole area kind of prime targets on a battlefield. Now clearly someone realized that showing off her collarbones meant that she had no protection there. So you can see that they've put some mail right here, but nothing underneath it. Normally you would have padding under there. We could sort of hand wave this as some kind of advanced alien male, which doesn't require padding because it's just so fancy, but it's not even a shirt. So if you look kind of down here, you can see that there is male that goes down to her thigh. But if we zoom in, you can see that there is absolutely no male at her shoulders. Like there's just bare skin under there. If you're wearing a male shirt, just wear a male shirt especially because then it will cover your armpit, which is very difficult to clothe. And like you have the materials, <laughs> why? Overall Sif's armor just makes me think of a dinosaur. Grrr. Because there's stuff that's protecting kind of like the front and the top, but you know, th there's nothing at the back. There's nothing really on the legs, but I like the idea and it's way better than new armor at all. So could be worse. Akoye from Black Panther. Flippin' love it. So the costume designer said they drew from a lot of different places to design the Dora Milaje, and so you have these kind of Japanese style split toe boots, which I love. You have neck rings and you're using them as a gorget, which is just inspired. And also there was a lot of inspiration from the Maasai, except for the design of this thingy here, which was apparently inspired by somebody's aunt's table runner. That is so beautifully random. I like the color detail. If you look at this picture, you can see that everybody else in the Dora Milaje is in silver accoutrements, but Akoya gets gold because she is in charge. She also gets a slightly fancier outfit overall. You got no helmets, but that is in keeping with the style and you know, it's Hollywood. Most of what they're wearing is textile armor and then you have extra reinforcement on the forearms and the neck and the shoulders and I love it. I'd wear it. Next. Princess Leia's metal bikini in Return of the Jedi. I want to say chainmail bikini, but it's not actually made of mail, is it? But it clearly is meant to be metal parts which are backed by cloth, and it looks 
really skimpy and uncomfortable. And that works. She still gets practical boots though, just saying. I mean, I would probably question the necessity of this from a non-diegetic perspective, but I know that they put Carrie Fisher in this outfit because she's young and beautiful and now you can see a lot of her. Overall, this falls squarely into the category of not actually armour. But you know what? It works. Because even though it's a bit cheesecake, it provides this really stark visual contrast to all of Leia's previous appearances. Any other time she appears in the movies, she is covered basically from head to toe. It's a very daring kind of day if you can see her collarbone or a bit of her forearm. The bikini that launched a thousand imitators tells you that this character is not in control of this situation. Not yet. Anyway. Not armour. But it works. Oh boy, I really need to speed up. Okay, the Valkyries in Charmed. All right, in this episode, Phoebe and Paige disguise themselves as Valkyries to go and rescue Piper, I think. This would be fine as not actually armor, like we just wear leather bikinis and miniskirts here. That's how we roll, we're Valkyries. But they're wearing van braces and, and greaves. And that just says to me that this is actually meant to function as armor. In which case, the only place we can possibly put it is just stab me now. But all the other Valkyries are dressed like this as well. Like, oh my gosh, we've got so many places that you could stab us, but it's all right, I'm wearing this one pauldron and mine's a scale one. That was slightly quicker. Eowyn in The Return of the King. She's not wearing it in the publicity photo, but she does get a helmet. We've got this long male shirt, very nice. She's basically wearing a light version of the men's armor, which makes sense for two reasons. First of all, because she's much smaller and slighter than they are, and so she'd probably need something a little bit lighter. And second, because I think in the books, this is a young man's armor set, which she has acquired. Either way, I love it. I wear it. And I think they had Eowyn's armour in mind when they designed Susan Pevensey's armour in Prince Caspian, because you've got a lot of the same elements, but they're more kind of feminine looking. So we've got another male shirt, though I would have had it a bit longer, I think, for preference. And just look at the thickness of that collar. You know what that says to me? Gambeson. She's actually wearing a gambeson under there. Underneath her male shirt, which is clearly loose enough that she can draw a bow. The corset admittedly is a pretty stylized take, but I kind of dig it. First because it's a fantasy movie and so you have a little bit more leeway, and second because she's an archer and so now she has absolutely amazing shoulder mobility. Speaking of archer, they also give her a bracer. Yay. The corset also provides bust support always a plus, and kind of functions as a giant waist belt for that male shirt. So you'll note the long skirt, but if you look at some of the other pictures of it, you can tell that it only comes to slightly above her ankles. If you're used to moving in a long skirt, something of that length is not going to significantly impede you. Overall, this outfit has more fantastical license than Eowyn, but you know what? I'd wear this too. Strangely, when Susan goes into melee combat, they do give her more sort of shoulder and upper chest protection, but they also take away the male shirt. Wither the male shirt. Also, they've given her what appears to be a floor sweeping skirt, which no, no, just, just no. I mean, overall, this outfit could be worse, but why? We're also not going to talk about the part where Susan throws an arrow which penetrates a guy's male shirt and kills him, because I got nothing. Morgana in Excalibur. Just stab this poor woman now and put her out of her misery. Although, you know what? I haven't seen the movie, and so I am going to assume that this actually falls into the category of not actually armour. But if it were armour, a saucepan directly over each boob seems like it would be A, minimally protective, and B, constantly too cold or too hot. Mariella in In the Name of the King. Oh boy, we have, we have some stuff going on here. We have some ingredients, shall we say, of dubious quality, and they're put together in a way that suggests that there wasn't really a clear idea of what to do with them. And yet, and yet, Somebody obviously tried. Okay, so first we've got the scale vest, which is apparently sized for a 10 year old because look at all of this space here. It doesn't close at the sides, it's really tight and it's really short. Even my cosplay armor, which is leather scales sewn over a fitted bodice top, isn't as tight as this. Also in the too small category are those cuisses, which also seem to not be attached. Like normally you'd attach them to your belt or they'd be attached to your knees or something. Upper chest protection is made of cloth, I guess? But I don't really know what's going on there. Is she wearing the scale shirt underneath it? I really hope so. As her base layer, she's wearing a long sleeve grey t-shirt and I think leggings. The point of the belt is to take some of the weight of that armour, so it shouldn't be there like you're doing a pirate cosplay. It should be up here and like relatively tight. The pauldrons are well, I imagine they were on a budget and that's why they are clearly not made of metal, but they're also sort of in the wrong place. Like these should be higher up a little bit and this one should be 
kind of here. Ditto these metal van braces, which are sitting in a really strange spot. So bracers protect the inside of your forearm from your own bowstring when you're an archer. Van braces protect the outside of your forearm from sword strikes or other melee weapon strikes. She's got two swords, but those van braces are just in the wrong place. The metal part needs to be here across her forearm so that she can actually protect herself. How to rank this one? Okay, a lot of it is just really bad or just not quite right, but you know what? They clearly tried. Someone put in some effort, so it could be worse. And if you look at the men in this movie, they also often don't have their pauldrons in the right place. They do usually get their van braces on the right way around though. And our last one for the more in-depth section is a classic, Xena from Xena Warrior Princess. People have wildly varying opinions on this one. I mean, no, there is no upper chest or neck or indeed head protection, but the lack of head protection is pretty standard for Hollywood. But the skirt isn't bad in concept. It is a bit short, but it's not bad. The boots are decent, and this sort of corset pauldron thing provides a reasonable amount of coverage. I'm always more forgiving of things which are basically leather or textile based armour with metal accoutrements, because if you've gone to all of the trouble to get big pieces of metal and attach them to your body, then you should try and optimise that. But I understand if this is like a leather outfit that you're gonna wear every day, it's just not the same as a full suit of plate, you know what I mean? I mean, yes, this isn't the most protective armour set you've ever seen, but mobility is very possible in it, and honestly, it could be worse. And you know, if you had a slightly higher neckline and a slightly longer skirt, I'd probably bump that up to pretty good. Whew, okay, good job everyone, time for the lightning round. Captain Phasma, yes, do want, so shiny, and look ma, no codpiece. I'd wear it. The movie version of Red Sonja. Could be worse, but I feel not actually armour is probably the category I want to go for here. That being said, the whole ensemble is vastly at odds with the film's characterization of her, but I, I got into that. Yeah. Elizabeth the Golden Age. I've said it before, it needs more waist segmentation, but otherwise I love it. It's so shiny, I wear it. Sam is from Metroid. Love it. I mean, I probably couldn't wear it because it's meant to be powered armour, but still, I would like to. Zero suit Samus. Uh, at least it covers her whole body, but those hideous shoes are going straight into Just Stab Me Now. If they have rockets in the heels, Jill, I don't care. They're ugly. So ugly. Female Klingons. Ah, like normally I'd put this in could be worse, but they're meant to be a warrior race where everything is optimized for the battling and it's just so invitingly stabby. Lady Mandalorians. I mean, we talked about those in the boob armor episode as well, but the short version is, yeah, I like it. I'd wear it. All right, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy my similarly extensive one on boob armor, which is probably linked up there. All right, see you around.